Hello, welcome to lecture four, our second lecture on themes of art. Today we will look at how artists invoke themes of the human experience and the natural world. Please feel free to pause this video as needed to take notes. Throughout human history, individuals and societies have explored existential questions about our presence here on earth and the mysteries surrounding the unknown qualities of time before birth and after death. Art has been a useful way for us to express these questions and seek answers, alongside other methods of expression such as storytelling, music, dance, and more. We will look at some examples of artworks that engage with the questions surrounding the meanings of life and how artists and society have attempted to explain these mysteries. Despite the many differences people have across cultures, places, and time periods, there are several key experiences that connect all humans. Family ties and relationships, especially the physical processes of birth, growth, and death that connect us to each other, are shared by all, regardless of when and where we have lived. In an attempt to help explain the mysteries and reasons behind our own life cycles and the meanings our lives hold in the long arc of history, artists have given visual form to many creation stories and myths over time. Communities develop shared understandings of how we came to be, often within the framework of religious beliefs or spiritual stories called creation myths. There are endless examples of works depicting creation myths and explaining the personal and familial connections between people. In this large triptych, a painted work made up of three panels, the artist Hieronymus Bosch has given us a visual story about how humans were created, what has happened since, and what may happen in the future if we continue our current behaviors. This work is meant to be read from left to right. Starting on the left is the scene of a creation myth. We see God bringing life to Adam and Eve, the first humans on earth according to the Judeo-Christian religious tradition. They were miraculously created and lived in a paradise environment before being banished for disobeying God, at which point they became mortals and beget offspring in the same manner that generations of humans have ever since. Paintings such as this one helped viewers envision the stories of human creation more clearly, giving specific features to these myths in order to make them more accessible and believable in the minds of viewers. In a very different version of a creation myth, this ritual vessel from the Yoruba culture in modern-day Nigeria also attempted to make the stories of human creation and existence more real and believable for viewers. This vessel is from the city of Ifa, known as the navel of the world, since it is believed by the Yoruba to be the place where life began. Unlike Bosch's painting, in which the scene portrayed is solely responsible for conveying the creation myth, this ritual vessel reinforces the concept of creation through both its imagery and its form. The shape of the vessel recalls the important elements of human creation, with the round opening at the top referring to the navel of the human body, our remnant of physical connection with our mothers in utero. The large round form of the vessel itself recalls the roundness of a pregnant mother, creating life within her, and the S-shaped form on the surface of the vessel represents the umbilical cord connecting mother to unborn child, which is subsequently cut to create an independent life upon birth. Unfortunately, once we are born and develop throughout our human lifetimes, we all experience times when our actions are judged. Judgment is an important shared experience and is greatly shaped by cultural values, political laws, and religious beliefs. In addition to the cycle of life and the creation myths 
The theme of judgment appears prominently in artworks that seek to explore the universal experiences of humankind across time and place. One of the most common ways of addressing judgment is in relation to its impact upon our eternal future in different visions of the afterlife. Many cultures envision a form of life after death, usually a result of religious teachings and traditions. And the process of judging the behaviors and actions during one's time here on earth can affect the trajectory of one's experience after death. Here we have what is known as a last judgment scene on the tympanum, a decorated space above the entryway of a large Catholic cathedral in Saint Lazare in France. What we see is the figure of Jesus Christ in the center, making decisions about whether the recently deceased souls below him will be blessed or damned. This type of scene was a popular choice for entrances into cathedrals as a way to remind visitors to devote their lives and direct their actions in a manner that will please God and ensure them a pleasant experience after death. A closer look shows an event called the weighing of souls, in which the souls are literally weighed in order to see whether the good deeds one has done during their lifetime outweigh the bad, and thus whether they deserve to be blessed in the afterlife. If there was any question about what not being blessed looks like, we have a series of figures writhing in pain and agony at the bottom of this scene, encouraging viewers to live their lives knowing that judgment awaits them when they die. Speaking of death, it is another important and popular theme within the broader human experience and life cycle for artists to portray. Oftentimes, religious and cultural narratives center on the sacrifices individuals make for others to thrive and emphasize lessons of the inevitability of death and the possibility of rebirth in the afterlife to justify such sacrifices. These narratives play important roles in explaining the complex experiences of life and artists are employed to illustrate these narratives more clearly for their communities. In works addressing death in this way, artists will usually include references or portrayals of ancestors, the deceased, and even supernatural beings. For example, the Hindu god Shiva is shown here as the Lord of the Dance. In the Hindu religion, Shiva is a god known for embodying opposing phenomena, since he is both a creator and destroyer of the universe. In this way, the cycle of time is never-ending, and Shiva's form here emphasizes the dual roles he plays, with his many limbs and the endless circle of flames around him. The creation is followed by destruction, only to be followed by rebirth, and more creation, then more destruction, allowing viewers to contemplate the dependence one aspect of life has upon its opposite, including birth and death. In addition to the cycles of life experienced by people, artists use visual expression as a way to conceptualize the many ways humans interact with the natural world around them. Cultural traditions greatly affect one's regard for nature, ranging from portrayals of the powerful influence nature can have over us to the ability of man to dominate and manipulate nature. The power of nature is a theme that artists routinely display, whether that is the destructive tendencies of natural forces, such as hurricanes, fires, and floods, or the unwavering movements of the celestial bodies in our solar system, artists have demonstrated the wonder we humans experience in the face of powerful natural forces beyond our control. One of the ways humans have traditionally portrayed this powerful quality is by assigning mythological beings or deities 
two specific natural phenomena. And comprehending these natural forces in terms of the contentment or discontent of these supernatural beings. This practice has traditionally helped to explain the more troubling and unknown causes of nature's own cycles of creation and destruction. For instance, the ancient cultures of Mesoamerica attributed the presence or absence of rain to the whims and interests of the rain god, whom the Aztecs called Tlaloc and the Maya called Chuck. This powerful god could create floods with an abundance of rain or cause droughts by withholding rain. In order to please the god and ensure a healthy and safe level of rainfall, the Aztecs believed they were required to make offerings and sacrifices that would keep Tlaloc content. We see Aztec artists creating various objects bearing the likeness of this god in many different forms, emphasizing his constant and likely imposing presence in the lives of his worshipers. In other works, we see artists wrestling with the competing forces of nature and man. In this painting by Thomas Cole called The Oxbow, the right half of the canvas depicts a landscape that has been tended and controlled by humans for agricultural purposes. They have literally changed the features of the landscape and supposedly forced nature to comply with their desires. However, on the left half of the canvas, we see dark storm clouds and a more unrestrained growth of forests, showing nature's ability to push back against the actions of man. At the time Cole was painting, the United States was pushing westward, settling lands that had previously been undeveloped and untamed. And here we see him giving a visual life to this power struggle between man and nature. If there's any doubt as to nature's ability to stave off the encroachment of man in Cole's painting, there's no question about the domineering presence nature can have over man in Fan Quan's silk painting here. In this work, the mountains, cliffside, and trees engulf the visual space, leaving viewers to wonder whether or not there are travelers amid the mountains and stream at all. Can you find them? Look closely. They are shown as a tiny collection of figures in the path at the bottom right portion of the image. In this instance, man has very little control over his physical surroundings and the incredible dimensions of the landscape tower over the small group of travelers. Here, humans are mere passers-by in a world of enormous natural beauty. Our final image is a work that is actually made out of nature itself. Artists not only show nature's influence over and impact upon the life of people in the world, but they also use natural materials and spaces to create works of art on their own. Here we have the Spiral Jetty, created by the land artist Robert Smithson in 1970 on the edge of the Great Salt Lake in Utah. Here, nature is the art, instead of just the art showing us one artist's concept of nature. Although Smithson, of course, placed his own aesthetic interests upon this space and manipulated the materials to create a specific image. Once he finished the work, it has been left to the whims of nature once more. This concludes lecture four on themes of art, the human experience, and the natural world. As I mentioned in lecture three, we will certainly return to these themes and discuss them in more detail in relation to specific historical contexts.